Hi there, it's Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes. And here I am today with another jewelry jar. Uh, in this case, it's um, a canister, a glass canister missing its lid. Um, and I got it from my local Salvation Army. It weighs almost five pounds, 14 pounds, 15.7 ounces. Um, and uh, probably a good portion of that is the jar. I would expect at least one to two pounds to be in the jar. But uh, I'm excited to take a look at what's in here. Um, there looks to be like a, an alabaster dyed necklace, some faux pearls, um, uh, what else did I see? On the top I saw some lava rock. And there's a, you know, a faux, um, oh, sorry, I forgot the name of that, but some nice lava rock, um, a couple of pins here and there, some earrings on the bottom. So it should be uh, an interesting uh, jar full of treasures. I will uh, cut the tape off the top and then we'll get into it and see what we can find. Well, I've taken the tape off and already I can see some interesting stone treasures that were hidden in the top. This is uh, more exciting than I expected. This was the least expensive of the jars, but that's not the reason I chose it. I chose it because it had the most promising contents. And we're opening the jar again today on a remnant of uh, one of my hand-woven baby wraps. This is... Um, Sort of the end that was left over uh, the begin no the beginning where uh, I did the testing of colors for the weft um, and sort of worked out all the bugs. So uh, it looks quite nice with some of these colors, especially this uh, lovely stretchy bracelet, stretched out bracelet. So this is um, fairly heavy. Um, I would say glass or else how light dyed how light stone. Um, have a little magnet here put on the end of my does it stick when I put it on here not really attracted to it does it stay so I don't know what kind of metal this is but I think this would be a good uh, repurposing item if you've uh, seen any of my uh, makers Monday videos uh, I recently completed a jewelry set using uh, similar type uh, cabochons. So here's uh, a jewelry set I just finished. And so you can see a very similar type of uh, cabochon, but I turned it into a two-strand necklace. And I was really quite happy with the way it worked out. And I think that um, this bracelet will be perfect do the same kind of thing so nice piece for repurposing I had seen the lava rock at the top and these are actually lava rock bracelets stretchy bracelets um, that one's kind of overstretched this one's better um, there's a little Buddha head a couple of silver tone beads so those are um, Pretty good shape actually even the one that's a little overstretched um, certainly they can be repurposed or they can be used the way they are I'm not sure uh, I think I'll just set them aside as uh, in the good jewelry pile and I was thrilled to see these there were two of them where's or maybe more one two three four oh wow okay this is the worth the price of the jar the jar was $14.99 less the seniors discount which I'm just a young senior so this this is a lovely piece of polished rock I have no idea what kind it is I'll have to look it up with that purpley tone in there I've s something makes me think of something called dragon's blood there is a flaw on this side but that's not a problem here's a, a lovely piece of whatever as I said I don't know my stones right off 
the top. Uh, some of them I do. This one's got a scratch on it, but this, that can be easily polished. This one looks like like what they call Petoskey stone that are found around Lake Michigan with all these little round circles in them. And it, I think it's a type of fossilized coral. I'll have to look that up. But that's very interesting. Again, natural flaw there and there and over on this side. But these, this is, uh, as I said, worth the cost of the jewelry jar just to get these. Wow, these are wonderful. Uh, only somebody like me who makes jewelry would probably really appreciate these. And here's another beautiful stone pendant. Oh, I'll have a wonderful time uh, turning these into jewelry. Give them a nice shine, clean them up. So four beautiful, beautiful pendants. Great, we're off to a wonderful start. Hope you agree. Um, oh, this is kind of interesting. This looks, doesn't, doesn't look, um, what's the word I'm looking for? This looks vintage. This looks old. It might not be. Let's see, here's the clasp. And it's got an S on it. It's a box clasp. And it squeezes like this and pulls out. I needed to do that because it's tangled in another necklace that I'm trying to get it apart from. And then it's this lovely little camera locket. Now maybe it's not that old, um, but it certainly has a very good vintage style. And it is incredibly tangled with another larger, thicker chain. So just bear with me while I get them apart so you can see this in all its beauty. Wow, how it managed to get that tangled, I'll never know. But we're at the end here. Okay, so this is sweet. Lovely little camera. No uh, markings, doesn't open up that I can see. Three little, or two little pearls there make me think it's not old. And I'll have to look, it's a huge long uh, chain. So once again, I'll show you the, uh, there's that clasp design or symbol. So I'll have to look it up and see if uh, I can find a, a maker. There's no information on the tab, not on that side. Tab just slides in there. So, gosh, if I double it up here. So 1836 inches approximately for the length since it's twice my hand span. That is a sweet little necklace. Oh, I love it. That is so sweet. Wow. Good things in small packages today. And then uh, this is a tangle. Oh, I can see why because this is um, like memory wire. Okay, so here is a thick wire, memory wire bracelet. Let's see if I can focus down there. There we go. It's got a lovely little bird charm. It's got, what's this, just a little glass charm to the same. Oh, I guess there's a couple of elephants. Oh, my sister loves elephants. A couple of these sparkly things. So very nice. And I guess these... Might, do they screw on or off? Well, maybe not. Maybe these just belong down at the beginning or at, to hold everything in place. These are like, um, oh, these silicone spacers. So you put them in a spot and they stay there. So that could be, they could be there to hold those in place. Or you could, if you wanted to put these at a certain part of the jewel, bracelet you could do that you could just slide them and they stay there they don't move around so um, well put together coordinated 
Um, I don't know why this guy is, well, I guess because they're not really reversible. Um, they only go one direction, but I would have had him going so that the white, I would have had him facing the other direction if I were making it. So that, yeah, but a oh, cute bracelet. Okay, lots of good stuff here. And then, again, we're back into the tangle. So, I'm going to grab this. It's lightweight and it's broken. And it's got uh, just a ring there, so I don't know what type of clasp it had originally. These are plastic. They're meant to look like um, chip beads, I guess, or chunks of rock. And I don't know where the other half is, but I'll put it off to the side. Who knows? It Since they are... Um, chained together, linked together. Let me put it up here close. Come on, there we go. So, so since they are strung together in that way, it's easy to take them apart and reuse them. They're not on a, you know, molded onto a string or something. So something else to be repurposed if possible. And we saw this little bit of a necklace from the top of the jar. I wasn't really sure. Here's the. Here's this part of it. Looks like something else is supposed to hang from it. So, to give me, oh, interesting. How does this work? Sorry, there was some tape on this. I'll just get rid of that. So, this looks like it's supposed to be a two strand or necklace but there's no clasp there's just two rings or yeah a ring on each side and then the chains like that and it, they come down to these two pendants so this one with the bright yellow and the uh, topaz cab uh, topaz rhinestones and little faux pearls this one looks like it's a little bit. Yeah, okay. And then this is same topaz, but it's missing something there. So, oh, something else to uh, take apart and repurpose. Oh, there we go. There's the focusing. So that's odd. I don't know what would have happened to the uh, things that connect them together unless it was, you know, one of those... Uh, outfits where they sort of hooked onto a hook under the collar interesting so some more great chain to repurpose it's in great shape maybe need a little there we go so this is yeah a very lightweight aluminum chain nice hook very 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 lightweight um, but a nice little pearl on the end of the extender there definitely a choker um Yeah, so I'd say 16 inches without the extender. Um, hmm, I'm not really sure where to put that. Put that off to the side. But this is, uh, we saw from the top, cameo. That's what I couldn't remember was the word cameo. Obviously plastic or, well, it's cold enough to be glass. Kind of looks like glass. No maker's name. But definitely, you know, a molded piece, not carved. Um, in very good shape, good color. Nice long chain, just draw, draws over the head. This might be something to donate to the gratis shop. Since it's clean and wearable, someone would really enjoy that. And... What else have we got here in the tangle? Oh, wow, well, this came out easily. What is this? Is it like a little baby or a snowman on skates? We've got skates, mittens, a scarf, a hat with a bow. And it's a uh, lapel pin. So interesting never seen anything quite like that before 
There's an interesting winter pin. I thought maybe it was a pendant of some sort. Well, here comes a pretty necklace, or a couple pretty necklaces. They're just slightly entangled. So this one's quite lovely. Um, back, back down here, get it to focus. There we are. So there seems to be two different things I have to press just to focus. So lobster claw clasp, glass beads generally, these are and down to here, and then the lovely um, seed beads in beautiful shape, beautiful wearable piece, classy design, very nice. I certainly can't do any better than that. In terms of repurposing it, I would donate that. And then this was tangled with it. Oh, this is a bracelet. And just these little dangles were enough to uh, get it entangled with all those seed beads. So this is in great shape as well. Very pretty. Nice beads. Again, glass and plastic. A variety. These one, larger ones are glass. Well, some of these uh, might be glass as well. Some of these crystal ones. But a pretty little bracelet. I think very wearable. I have lots of bracelets, but I would wear that. It's a nice design. It's something with a little different look than what you see uh, every day. And then Got some things here. Now this looks like something broken. See how fine that chain is with the pearls on it? Yeah, here's, uh, obviously it's mis broken off from the other side. And this, this stringing, uh, usually it's like a silver or silver tone stringing wire, they call it, uh, or stringing chain. It's definitely, had to had a bad luck with tangling with this uh, great big faux pearl necklace. Let's see if I can. I need some pliers to help me out of this. So I'm gonna open. Oh, there we go. As soon as I threatened it with pliers, it came out. All right. So these are. These are look. These look like freshwater pearls that were then dyed or put, had a coating put on them. And the whole thing's broken apart. Can we focus in better on it? Yeah, you can see the coating coming off. So I'll have to check them more carefully. They may just be glass beads that were coated, but they could have been, they could be, let's see. Are they too symmetrical? in shape or identical in shape to be freshwater pearls. Comes around like that. You know what? I think they're just glass beads that were painted and then they're strung on this uh, lovely chain. So lots of things to be repurposed here. Certainly the beads can come off the chain. The chain can be reused. The clasp um, Oh, clasp has come off already, in, just in my handling of it. So lots of bits and pieces to be expected. And then there's this big pearly thing, hofo pearl thing, but I just see it's got its little connectors onto something else. There's the other side of it over here. Let's see if we can get around and... This one I'm definitely gonna take apart. Get that out, put it back. Okay, so what do you have to tell us? Pearls, besides the fact that you're, you got chunkiness going on here. Uh, a little bit of just tangling on itself. Nice length. So here are our pearl stations. Three large, two small. Two large, two, two small, one large. Three large, two small. 
So there's, and it stations all the way around. There's no clasp, very wearable. Dress it up, dress it down, add other chains with it. This just needs a good wash and it's uh, wearable. So they're probably in my donation pile. I don't tend to repurpose those big large pearls unless um, they're really good shape and that there's um, a good reason to do so. So this is, what are these? Well, these must be little. Okay, so the, here we have faux pearls and um, sequins. I've never seen sequins used like that. Interesting. So this um, seems to me to be multi-strand. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So there's the clasp. If I can bring it forward. And it's got these nice, what's this? Oh, this must be the extender. Okay, decent sized extender, but these nice triple arm connectors. And then there are three, five, eight strands of chains. And it makes up a relatively short, I would call it a chakra necklace. Let's focus in, yeah. So 16 inches and then an extender. So a nice choker necklace, very modern. Um, give it a wash. If I needed chains, I might keep it for future chain repurposing. Not sure what I'll do with that. So 20 minutes and we're, uh, let's see, that far into the jar. What is that, like a quarter of the way? So, I guess we'll go for, say, another five minutes, try to get a third of the way in, and I pulled out this beautiful, beautiful elephant pendant. It's got his trunk up, it's got some little plastic rhinestones there, and there's a, a tassel that I'm trying right here at the, at the top that I'm trying to detangle so that I can figure out where the the necklace, how the necklace part works. So just give me a, a second here. There's one half of the necklace. There's the other half. Okay. So here's how he goes with this little bit of a tassel in behind. Um, yeah, that I could leave. But in excellent shape lobster claw clasp there we go so um, if you look at the back no maker's mark but uh, kind of a pretty little elephant let's see if we can focus better on him there we go look at how much texture he has and you know you could take or leave that little chainy thing and uh, if you didn't like it, it's so very nice. Lots of great you re. Uh, oh, hmm. Well, there's this all by itself. I wonder if this somehow belongs with the elephant. Certainly, it would look spectacular if it was way down here, but not, hmm, not so much on its own. Really nice dangle. Oh, so that's got me thinking. So I think it's time to wrap up. Um, and start on a second video probably take three total for this jar uh, if we kind of keep them under 30 minutes but the best thing so far from this jar for stone pendants beautiful natural stone pendants this really cool little uh, vintage looking camera and chain 
which I'll want to uh, see if I can find out more about whether that's a maker's mark of any sort and some natural lava bead bracelets and lots of things to donate. So thanks for joining me today. It's Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes and I uh, hope you uh, will like and subscribe today. Uh, at least come back for part two of this five pound jewelry jar. Thanks very much.